Hi, my name is Durga Borkar, and I'm a medical advisor at Verona Health, as well as a vitreal retinal surgeon and assistant professor of ophthalmology at the Duke University Eye Center. Today, I'll be talking to you about beyond black and white data, how large language models are unlocking the full spectrum of nuances in patient care. Taking a step back, let's think about the difference between real world data versus real world evidence. When we think of real world data, think of electronic health records, claims and billing activities, product and disease registries, and patient generated data. Basically anything that is captured in the routine clinical care of patients. It's important to realize though that real world data is not real world evidence. Real world data requires careful ingestion, curation, analysis, and than interpretation to be quality RWE. And we often use real world evidence to monitor post-market safety and adverse events, to support coverage decisions for payers, to develop clinical guidelines for practice, to support trial design, and to create observational studies to generate new treatment. However, 80% of healthcare data that we collect in routine clinical care is unstructured. Verona Health is a health technology company that's transforming unstructured electronic health record data into structured quality data assets to inform research and care using advanced AI, including natural language processing, machine learning, and more. So when we think about the data sources that we're able to leverage, there's claims data, which has medical claims, pharmacy claims, mortality data, primarily structured data. Then there's EHR data that comes from a multitude of EHR systems. And depending on the type of data you're looking at from the electronic health record, this can be either structured or unstructured data. And of course, there's imaging data. In ophthalmology in particular, we value this data. We think that a picture is really worth a thousand words. So there are ophthalmic images where we think look at OCT, fundus autofluorescence, and infrared images as well as outside of ophthalmology, x-ray images, MRI images. What we realize is that claims data can often be very black and white. The data can be structured. It provides a complete payer view and it's provider agnostic, but the detail is really limited to code selection, which often limits the types of disease that we can study and the depth of the patient journey that we can understand. EHR data really has some areas of gray. As I mentioned, the data is both structured and unstructured. It includes patient sentiment and it includes clinical nuance as well. The problem really is that structured codes don't say it all. When you look at the variety of codes that are out there, looking at just multiple sclerosis, for example, there are so many different subtypes of multiple sclerosis that would all be included under this one parent code. So it would be difficult to look at a very specific patient journey. Then we look at another ICD code, Y93.E2, and that's for injury due to an activity. The activity is laundry. That's clearly too specific to really understand anything about a patient journey. And then in ophthalmology, there are procedures like refractive surgery, specifically LASIK surgery, where the codes simply do not exist. So this is where we can really find nuance in the unstructured clinical notes. This is where we see details between clinical encounters, where we see physician reason for treatment decisions, patient symptoms, comorbidities or other influencing factors, and diseases with more complex diagnostic criteria. But Unstructured data can really be messy. So when we look at, you know, a supervised one issue is that it's difficult to extract value from clinical notes. Unstructured clinical notes can be messy. Using supervised or rules-based approaches, our product VeraQ by Verona Health can surface relevant clinical notes, enabling comprehensive lists of relevant key phrases or terms that can improve cohort expansion or increase velocity of algorithm development. We use clinical guided machine learning and natural language processing to do this for each indication, for each data module. And this helps us extract key patient outcomes that live in clinical notes versus just in the structured field, such as tumor stage for prostate or bladder cancer, intraocular pressure for glaucoma, or clinical relapse rates for multiple sclerosis. 
Verona Health uses clinician-guided machine learning and NLP to surface these relevant notes and enables a comprehensive list of relevant key phrases or terms that can improve cohort expansion. When we look at the different curation methodologies, there are several. First, we can create a rules-based algorithm where the context is based on text strings that define variables. And that often allows us to do very fast and durable curation, but it can have limited effectiveness with more complex algorithms, particularly for more nuanced diseases that have a variety of diagnostic criteria. We can use machine learning where we look at human labeled data that drives these models. And those models scale well and they understand variable context. They're best used with large data sets like we have with our registry data. There's often the opportunity also to do human review. Human reviewed data enables high quality and complex curation, and it's a key solution for smaller disease areas and data quality. So depending on the disease we're looking at, this may be very necessary, even though it's a slower process. It can often be efficient though with the right infrastructure and tools which we've worked to build. And then there's also the opportunity to map clinical concepts. So we've created a library of structured code sets that are mapped to key clinical terms. And we often use this as a foundation for unstructured data curation. When we look at artificial intelligence with clinician oversight, what that really means is that there's a few different ways that we can have clinicians involved. When we think about expert clinical review, that's really the umbrella term that covers the overall sentiment of manual curation. It's the act of a subject matter expert manually reviewing notes, unstructured text, or structured inputs to guide a hypothesis generation, algorithm development, business rules, and feasibility studies. And then when we look a little bit further, a little deeper at machine learning and validation, this is a subset of manual curation, which involves labeling clinical data for use in model development and validation. And this can also include things like golden data set generation or gold standard clinical data against which to measure a model's performance. And lastly, there's brute force human abstraction. It's the ability to view an entire patient journey or select part of the journey in order to manually create a variable or group of variables. So when we look at clinical validation throughout this algorithm development, there are several phases. The initial phase zero really is when we develop the requirements. We look at use cases, what defines success versus failure. Oftentimes that means that we really need a real world definition of what the disease is and what we're looking for. Then we move on to phase one, which is where we do the data labeling and we create a labeling protocol to enable extraction of data in a standardized way. These labeled data sets are then generated to move into phase two, where a model is selected in alignment with documentation patterns and target output. When we look at the last phase or the testing phase, that's the certification of our model for production via performance metrics and clinical relevance checks that involves both quantitative scientists and clinical subject matter experts. Here's an example of how we pull clinical note snippets via natural language processing. So if you look at this neurology note, you can see that there are various text snippets that apply to different domains. There's one that really applies to the genetic testing. Then there's motor sensory information. There's also information on the ambulatory status. And then there's some information on treatment. All of that can be put together to develop an algorithm. When we think about advancement and approaches using NLP, we think about how you can look at more and more data using keyword searches. And if you just do a keyword search, what you see in this note is that the keywords are headache, radiating, pain into the neck, head trauma, CT scan. And what you get from that is that there's potential head trauma leading to a headache and radiating pain that required a CT scan. But if you do a rules-based approach where you also look for negative words, what we find is that the headache was not caused by head trauma and it did not result in a T CT scan, which is very different than a simple keyword search. And then if you go a step further where you really take in all of the information, including the age and gender of the patient, the nature of their pain, and when it started, as well as relevant positive and negative symptoms, what you're able to assess 
us from this with machine learning is that the patient is likely experiencing a migraine episode. So you can see that as we've advanced, the ability to make key conclusions has also done the same. What Verona Health does is that it has exclusive access to the American Academy of Ophthalmology IRIS Registry, which is the largest ophthalmology EHR registry in the world. It has close to 80 million unique patients, 16,000 contributing clinicians, and a 10-year longitudinal database from all over the country. And this is where I will focus most of the rest of this talk, given that I'm an ophthalmologist. And so when you think about clinical notes in ophthalmology, there's really a lot of information there. There's patient journey nuances that we can't capture from structured data. There's information about over-the-counter treatment usage that is not available in claims data because patients are buying many of these products from the store. And then there's the opportunity to identify conditions that have underutilized ICD codes or no code at all. I gave the example of LASIK surgery earlier in this talk. And there's an opportunity here to really do post-marketing studies before new codes are utilized when we go tap into that unstructured data, and also an opportunity to pair unstructured notes with the structured diagnosis or treatment codes. So I'll give you a few examples. The first example is how we were able to use unstructured data for clinical trial site selection. In this case, the sponsor was running a 30-site clinical trial in a new indication that is rare, complex, and has not really been studied in clinical trials previously. So identification of not only sites that have these patients, but also the patients themselves was expected to pose quite a challenge given both the prevalence and the novelty of this disease. So in this case, the sponsor wanted Verona Health to help identify high volume study sites to recruit this unique population for a phase two study with a novel ophthalmic indication. And this is important with no existing ICD code and a complex patient journey. Using our AI-enabled algorithms, we were able to identify, qualify, and introduce four high-volume study sites to recruit this unique population and help the trial start on time. They were able to identify 16 patients to be screened and to meet their study goal. Another way that we're really able to harness the power of unstructured data is to look at rare disease progression. So this is an example in the retina space where I practice. Uveitic macular edema, or UME, is a complication of uveitis or ocular inflammation, and it's well established that this condition is not well-coded, and it's necessary to look into the clinical notes to identify patients. As a result, most UME studies that have been published to date are very small, maybe 50 to 100 patients. In this case, the sponsor wanted Verona Health to help identify patients with this condition and overlay that with their exact drug use, both of which had to be extracted via NLP from the clinical notes as the, the new drug did not yet have a permanent J code. Using our UME algorithm that we developed using some of the steps I described previously, we were able to identify over 100,000 patients with UME, with just orders of magnitude larger than any study that's been previously done. And we were able to uncover patient journey findings through this, as well as identify almost 1,000 patients using a currently rarely used new-to-market therapy. Lastly, unlocking structured data is a great way to identify early treatment patterns and outcomes when a drug first comes to market. In this case, the sponsor was interested in early treatment patterns and outcomes of patients using furosemab, the first bispecific antibody for the eye, for age-related wet macular degeneration and diabetic macular edema. And they wanted to do this very shortly after FDA approval in January of 2022. So the, our goal here was to identify patients who received furosemab shortly after FDA approval, before the J code was widely implemented, and to evaluate patient characteristics and treatment outcomes, primarily visual acuity. Using our AI-based approach, we were able to identify over 28,000 treated eyes to understand responses to drugs, dosing intervals, and how outcomes differed for pre treatment naive versus previously treated eyes. But going beyond the AI for notes, I think it's important to also think about AI for imaging, particularly in ophthalmology. For us, ophthalmic images play a 
critical role in the diagnosis and management of diseases in routine clinical care. It's essential to be able to accurately measure disease progression over time in a standardized manner. And using those images themselves removes the clinician interpretation that's often variably present in notes. So Verona Health is applying AI via machine learning and computer vision to analyze ophthalmic images at scale. So the example I'll give you again is in my specialty of retina, geographic atrophy. This is one of the late stages of age-related macular degeneration, the leading cause of blindness in the United States that affects over a million people. And it's characterized by the atrophy of different retinal cells and you lose vision where that atrophy forms, as you can see in this example in the bottom right. Vision loss caused by geographic atrophy is irreversible. And there's currently very limited FDA approved uh, therapies. These, these drugs actually are not treatments, but they're ways to slow the progression of the disease. So currently there's no FDA approved treatment to reverse geographic atrophy. So how can we leverage AI in geographic atrophy? We're taking a three-step approach. So step one is an AI-powered screening and our diagnostic assistance tool. Step two is an AI-powered disease progression monitoring tool. And step three is an AI-powered disease prognosis tool that can be used for treatment planning. As many may argue, the first step to study a disease is really to diagnose it. So in the first step of our three-step approach indicated by the first column here, we built AI-powered screening and diagnosis assistance tools where we leveraged hundreds of real-world fundus autofluorescence images and developed deep learning models that can automatically identify eyes with geographic atrophy secondary to age-related macular degeneration. To be able to reach the goal, though, of understanding disease progression, it's simply impossible to have human graders outline and measure all GA images available in real-world data. That would amount to millions of images. So hence, the second step in our three-step approach is to leverage deep learning so that a model could automatically segment and measure the size of a GA lesion, enabling the measurement of GA growth rate, as indicated by the second column. And then lastly, in our three-step approach, we propose to combine EHR data and imaging data to build multimodal input AI algorithms to allow for patient-level prognosis, predicting patient response under different treatment schema to optimize patient outcomes and facilitate treatment planning. This is what truly unlocks the promise of real-world data and AI, where in combination, new knowledge about the disease is discovered. So now you've heard about our three-step approach, and I'd like to provide a little bit more technical detail into our general machine learning and AI approaches. So if you've ever wondered what the difference is between machine learning and deep learning, the first two rows provide an example in the context of classification. Here, our task is to be able to give the algorithm an, an image, specifically a fundus autofluorescence image, and have the model predict if this image has geographic atrophy or not. On the first row, you have an example of a classic machine learning approach. The first step involves an expert to decide what would be relevant features to extract from this image before classification. This involves translating the human understanding of, I see a dark region on the image, which represents retinal pigment epithelium layered cell death, which represents geographic atrophy, and to convert that to mathematical numbers. Sounds pretty hard to me. So on the second row, you see the same example, but with a deep learning approach. So there's no need to extract specific features anymore because the deep learning model is set up to learn these features itself and decide what is relevant based on the training data available. This eliminates the need of experts to design and extract features, but it also requires a much larger amount of training data. And then lastly, we also utilize deep learning approaches to perform segmentation tasks on top of classification tasks. As the last row example illustrates, this technology allows you to obtain a binary mask indicating where the GA lesion is, rather than a yes or no for GA existence. This is the technology we have at Verona to calculate GA growth rate at scale, rather than relying on human graders. And this is how we plan to make it cheaper, faster, and all around better. 
So this is an example of an initial imaging machine learning algorithm we developed in the last couple of years and presented at an ophthalmology meeting and are working to write into a manuscript. Here, our image engineers work to develop a machine learning pipeline to automatically identify and confirm geographic atrophy using imaging. The team identified a set of images for analysis and developed a model to assess image quality using features of signal, contrast, noise, and sharpness. The algorithm was trained to identify the presence or absence of GA in these images. The model used over 15,000 images for its training and test sets, performed well with well over 90% accuracy, and you can imagine that a model like this could have significant potential for screening patients for GA trials and also for future GA treatments. So when we think about how unstructured data helps complete the real world picture, what we know is that 80% of healthcare data is unstructured, so we need to use it to power our WE studies, particularly for rare diseases and early adopters of new therapeutics. Additionally, AI advancements will only improve the quality of data curation and scalability, and linking multiple data sources such as EHR, claims, and imaging data will offer the most complete picture. Thank you.